So in this problem, as this loop keeps falling down, the flux within this region is going to decrease. So originally there is a magnetic field pointing into the page, and so once it starts falling, there's going to be less magnetic field pointing inside of the page. And then nature is going to try to restore that order, and then it's going to induce a current where the magnetic field is going to point inside. And if you use your right hand rule, you know that current is going to go in this direction, so it's going to go clockwise. So once it starts going down, there's going to be current along this edge. And then if you apply the right hand rule again, so the current goes this way, and then you have a magnetic field pointing inside, that's going to result in a force that's going to point upwards. So this is a magnetic force. Now we also have the gravitational force that's pulling this thing down. So with both of these forces counteracting each other, let's try to find the velocity of this hoop. So first of all, let's try to, let me just define this length as x, and this length over here as a. So this is going to come in handy later. So first of all, let's try to find a flux. So the flux is area, so a times x times the magnetic field. So the EMF induced, once the loop starts falling, is the change in flux. So I don't want to deal with the negative sign, so all we're concerned with is the magnitude. So we get a, b, d, x, d, t. So a, b, both of these are constants. And d, x, d, t, that's just the change in x, right? So uh, once it falls down, the change in x, this, is, this should be negative because x is shrinking. But essentially, x is going to be equal to the velocity of this thing going down. So with the absolute sign, let's just change this to velocity. So this is the magnitude of the EMF. And this is going to be equal to IR. So I'm just using the formula V equals to IR. So this is our V. So in the end, you see that the current is equal to A times B times V divided by R. And so you, now that we found the current, we can actually find the magnetic, uh, the magnetic force. So magnetic force is equal to the current times the length. So in our case, the length, I've defined that as A. So let's just use A instead, times the magnetic field. So current, we just found, is equal to AB, ABV, so A squared, B squared, V divided by R. So this is going to be the magnetic force. So now, uh, let us try to set up an equation. So we have a magnetic force pulling down. So for this problem, let us take downwards as positive. So we can set up a F equals to MA problem. So on the left-hand side, we have all the forces, so mg that's pointing down, so it's positive, and then we have this magnetic force, so this is the magnitude of the magnetic force, and it's going to point upwards, so that's going to be negative. Now this is going to be equal to mass times the change in velocity, mass times acceleration is change in velocity. So this is our, our differential equation. So if you, if you dump the m over to the other side, you get this expression. So I'm going to have to divide all this over to the other side, so a squared, b squared divided by mr, v, dv, dt equal to 1. Then I'm going to integrate both sides, so t is going to go from 0 to t. And then on this side, once we apply substitution, essentially we have dv, so at time 0, this this uh, loop is going to be stationary, so the velocity, the initial velocity is zero, and then it's going to head to some velocity in the future, which is which is going to correspond to the to the velocity at time t. So integrating this, this is just natural log g minus a squared b squared divided by m r v, and then because there's this constant here, we need to flip the constant over on the, on the outside. Evaluate this from 0 to v. On the right hand side, we have t. So, let's arrange this a bit further. So, for the natural log term, we have natural log g minus a squared b squared divided by, is it mr? Yeah, mr v divided by g. So, I'm just substituting 0 here. And also you might think uh, this is actually kind of a, like an abuse of notation. I'm using v here and I'll also have a v here. So I should have used like something y, so I should have used a different placeholder. But you get my meaning, so I'm just going to be a bit lax with the mathematical notation. And t 
two. So I'm going to dump all the constants over to the other side. And then I'm going to raise both sides to the power of e. So I'm going to raise e to the power of both sides. So on the left hand side we have these remaining. So I'm going to put this g over to the other side as well. So you see that velocity is equal to g 1 minus e negative a squared b squared over mrt. And then I have more of these constants to dump over to the other side. And so there we have it. This is actually our formula for the velocity at any given moment. And then if you notice, assuming that a loop is large enough so that after a sufficiently long time it's still falling, so it's still undergoing this change in flux, this term is going to shrink to something close to zero, right? So this keeps getting smaller and smaller because there's a negative sign. So once this disappears essentially, all we're left with is other constants. So we, all we're left with is mgr divided by a squared b squared. And this is actually going to be equal to the terminal velocity. So the final velocity that this uh, thing is going to tend towards. So let us just define the symbol vt. So this is our terminal velocity. So using this notation, we can simplify this into something like this. So if you check the constants, this is just the inverse of this without the g. So that's just e to the negative g over vt times t. And remind ourselves, our original problem is, try, is to find the amount of time it takes to reach a 90% of terminal velocity. So if you want, want the, the, the loop to reach 90% of terminal velocity, this thing over here is going to be equal to 0 0.9, right? So let's do just that. So when this thing reaches 0 0.9 terminal velocity, this term over here has to be equal to 0 0.9. So e to the negative g over vt times t is equal to negative 0 0.1. And then taking, taking the natural log of both sides, on the left-hand side we have negative g over vt times t. And then this is just natural log 1 over 10, which is says negative natural log 10. So now we can dump everything to the other side, the negative signs that cancel out. So I should put the negative back here. And then dumping the constants to the other side. You see that the amount of time to reach 90% of terminal velocity is equal to terminal velocity divided by g times natural log of 10. And uh, in the problem, they tell you to, to actually find the actual numbers. So uh, just have fun with that. Just substitute the numbers in. I'm not I'm a bit too lazy to actually do the numbers, but this is as close as I'm going to get you to, to the answer. So all you have to do is just, just substitute numbers into this formula.